I stopped it briefly so that uh, we actually have both games separate as far as on our video. Yeah. So, game number two, minutes. the Lions, that's what I figured, of uh, Mount St. Joseph against the Wilmington Fighting Quakers. Yeah. Thank you. Got some stats. That's the ones I laid out there. All right. All right. Okay, well, we're going to take a little break here. We've got about 20 minutes before the next game gets tipped off. It's so popcorn time. It is popcorn time. That's right. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Wow. What a way to start the season. In our first game tonight, uh, Wilmington defeats Denison 59-56. Uh, Here's some scoring. Uh, for Denison, uh, Maringer, she finishes with 18 points. Nottage with 12. Schaefer with 6. Holmes, that is Jordan Holmes, with 5. Emily Krumpke with 6. And uh, Province had 5. And uh, Erica Holmes had 3. Lauren Hoffer, she had one point to uh, to round out the scoring for uh, Denison. They shot 57. Let's see. Let me see the total here as far as uh, percentage. Denison shot 45.1%. They were 23 for 51. Uh, they were uh, 2 for 8 for 25% with their 3-point field goals. And uh, 8 for 14 for 57.1% for their free throws. For Wilmington, Wilmington actually shot less, 41.4%, but they made them count. 24 for 58. They were 50% at the free throw line, or the three-point line, 7 for 14, and 40% from free throw land. That was 4 for 10. Wilmington with 34 rebounds, and Denison with 31. Wilmington with 15 assists, Denison with 6. Wilmington had 15 turnovers as well as 15 for uh, Denison. Uh, points off turnovers, Wilmington with 18, Denison with 17. And for Wilmington, as far as our scores here, Hartman had eight, Moyer with 12, and of course the big one was that three-pointer that uh, won the game for Wilmington. Brittany Jefferson with six, Andraki with eight, Campbell with 13 points. She was uh, the leading scorer of the game. Uh, Locke threw in two points, Savannah Hooper with seven, and uh, Jacole Tabor with three. So, once again, our first game of the evening. We'll have the men's game momentarily. We've got about 16 and a half minutes, and we'll be kicking that off right here on CampusNation.com, the sports animal, the home for high school and college sports. Rick Phillips with Charlie Hargrave. We'll be back momentarily.
went, I went down there to make sure they made Because the men sometimes love it too. So. boxes are getting smaller. What do you think? Probably. Heck yeah, they are. Look at that old one in there from last year.
right, we're getting ready for game number two. These are the Mount St. Joseph Lions, and they're going to be taking on the uh, the men of Wilmington College, the Fighting Quakers. We've got about eight minutes remaining before this second game is going to get ready to tip off. And uh, Charlie, you're eating their smaller box of popcorn. Yes. It is getting tinier. Uh, the Pepsi's still about the same, 20 yes. ounces of sugary uh, syrup. Yes. And uh, you've, you've got all the latest stats and information on the men. Uh, once again, the first game for the Wilmington Quaker men as well. Uh, the Lady Quakers, they were uh, productive, and they won the first game. Uh, a last three-pointer three uh, by M squared, Mary Moyer, to cap that game, and uh, hopefully the men will come away with a W as well. Uh, Charlie, tell us a little bit about the uh, the men's basketball I'll tell you team. what, that was an exciting game. It was. Wow. It was very exciting. Wow. I was, man, if we can get half the games like that this year, it'll be, be a fun it'll, season. It'll be worth the money we pay to come in here and watch these, right? right. Now, uh, just to let you know, the, the Roman Quakers have had two uh, exhibition games. They did play NKU in the exhibition. They got beat 102 to 54, but NKU is Division One too. So then they also played at Campbellsville, and we don't have a score for that. Yeah, that but Campbellsville, under, they're pretty they were good here too. last year. They were right? here last year. That's right. But they yeah. actually were here to play them in regular season. Right. Right. I don't see them on the schedule here for this year, just as the exhibition. And then, so this is actually their third outing. Uh, they go against Mount St. Joseph tonight. And uh, Mount St. Joe has won 11 of the team's 15 meetings with the Quakers. Last Wilmington victory came in 2010-2011. As uh, the Quakers posted an 81-69 win. The last time they met... Uh, Zach McCorkle pulled the college, Wilmington College men's team even in overtime. But Mount St. Joe's took the inbounds pass length of the court and hit the game-winning layup, allowing the Lions to escape with a 98-96 non-conference victory at the Harrington Center. So last year, there was only a two-point difference between these two teams. Uh, Preseason poll... Wilmington has picked to finish ninth out of 10 in the conference, so that doesn't bode well for them. They are returning three starters. Uh, after last year's, uh, they kind of a dismal season last year, 5-19. and 19. Uh, Junior Christian Jones is the top returning starter for the Fighting Quakers. Uh, he averages 12 a game. He did score 20 in three consecutive games toward the end of the year, and a high of 26 against Marietta. Sophomore Jordan Hecker and Kevin Lewis returned to the team after missing all but nine seasons a season ago. Dunk champion. For the second season in a row, sophomore Kevin Lewis electrified the crowd at Wilmington's Herman Madness celebration. The 5'10 guard displayed his enormous jumping ability in claiming the contest. Wilmington will feature 10 to 13 players in its regular rotation. So, again, they play tonight. Then they're at Rhodes on the 19th in the Rhodes Tournament, the 19th and 20th. Then they have Berea back here, the 27th. So we'd like to remind you that we are doing a live box cast tonight as well on WilmingtonQuakers.com. You can see all the HD action there. Uh, and, uh, of course, we are as well recording HD video for... Uh, video on demand which will be available on the campus nation website tomorrow evening and a reminder uh, upcoming we've got the uh, hampton inn tip-off this weekend and we'll be covering all four games right here on campus nation uh, that'll be on saturday and sunday we'll have that information posted to our site uh, here uh, in the next day two days And we, we've got one more men's game, uh, the 27th, uh, yeah. uh, which will be back here on the 27th after Thanksgiving. That'll round out November. Then we start high school basketball. And, of course, we're going to be at Southern State uh, Community College uh, three days. That'll be December the 2nd, December the 3rd, and December the 4th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All four county teams, high school teams, will be involved in that tournament, as well as greenfield McLean, Charlie's uh, tournament. Right. So your school will be involved this year. And up in Arlington. And you're going to see some great 
basketball talent, not just from the state of Ohio, but also from Indiana and uh, Kentucky. So we invite you to watch all those games. Um, I'm trying to think how many games. I think there's three games on Friday, three games on Sunday, and five games on Saturday. Wow. That's a lot of games. Wilmington, will, uh, they'll be uh, playing New Albany uh, Friday night for the uh, nightcap. So I know everyone here in the Wilmington area will be interested in the... Uh, uh, the Hurricane and uh, how they do. So, uh, once again, all those games will be broadcast with live audio and the delayed video will be available. And you can go and see last year. We've covered the last, well, all three years. Uh, this will be the third year as far as the uh, uh, the uh, Ohio uh, the Valley Hoops. And uh, this is our third year. And we'll have all the games, not just live audio, but we will record the video and that will be available. And you can go back and see uh, if you just go to Ohio Valley Hoops on our website. Website, you can look at last year's games. A lot of great games last year. Oh, man. Check out that new Albany game. That went like three or four overtimes last year. Right. And that's who Wilmington plays this year. Mount St. Joe, just let everybody know, they're out of the Heartland uh, Collegiate Athletic Conference. I think they've got a lot of teams from Indiana in that conference, if I recall. Actually, Mount St. Joe is picked to win that conference this year. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they will be relying heavily on juniors Eric Edwards and Andrew Finley. Both were honorable mention all conference last season. Edwards was the Lions' primary big man, 12.2 a game. Finley averaged 10.8 a game. So uh, you know, we have two halves now as opposed to four quarters. Right. And, uh, you know, we talked about these little half moon circles there in the, the key. And really, only one time did it come into play, did it, last game? That's right. And, and even then, we couldn't really tell because there were like 60 people in that little yeah. half-moon space. Right. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Again, last year, this was a overtime two-point win for uh, Mount St. Joe. So, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll have another exciting game here tonight. Wilmington will be wearing your home white, and it's white out night today. All the students are trying to wear white, and they even have white shirts for sale. And Mount St. Joe will be in their navy blue away uniforms. And we've got a DJ tonight uh, for these two games. Yep. Wilmington's getting fired up. They got their little circle going. So, pretty, is that popcorn nice, good? Very nice crowd tonight. Very nice crowd. I was panning around there trying to get a glimpse of some of the uh, traffic. Pretty nice crowd here tonight. Well, and it helps when you have both the men and the women playing on the same night. Yep. They probably ought to look at doing that more in the future. That would be good. But typically, the men are on the road when the women are here, obviously. Oh, that's true. Did you get the tickets tonight, Charlie? No. No tickets. All right. Well, then I guess we're not going out for a steak dinner afterwards. No. I got to go to Washington Courthouse to pick up my daughter. I know. What's that all about? Well, she's got play practice in Greenfield, but the director lives in Courthouse, so she's driving her to Courthouse. Oh, okay. And, of course, unlike the first game, we've actually got Wilmington cheerleaders for this game. Yep. I don't know why the uh, girls don't get any cheerleaders. I don't know. And we won't have the Star Spangled Banner because we already had it earlier. Right. But they will have the introductions, which... And, of course, Bill Learman, uh, the voice of... Wilmington College uh, basketball, uh, reminding Charlie to, 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 to keep cool. <laughs> keep calm and jazz on, baby. That's right. Okay, Jordan Henry. Adam Getz. So I guess they're not going to rotate. Eric Edwards. Number 20, Andrew Finley. Andrew Finley. Holden Herzl. 
That's your starters for uh, Mount St. Joe. Again, that's Henry, Getz, Edwards, Finley, and Hertzel. So is that blue or is that black? That's navy blue, man. Navy blue with some gold trim, yep. white trim. Yep. And we're getting ready for the Quakers to be introduced. They're starters. The mayor directing hey, traffic. A.J. Isles, junior guard from Fayetteville. Kristen Jones. Patrick. Andrew Russell. Jordan Hecker. So Kristen Jones, Will Patrick, DJ Isles, Andrew Russell. And Jordan Hecker are your starters for the Quakers. Looks like to me the Quakers will be going right to left on your radio dial, all dressed in white with green trim on the uniforms. And uh, Mount St. Joe Lions will be in dark blue. Navy blue. Navy blue. Well, that's what it says navy blue. Dark blue, navy blue. And with gold and white trim, they'll be going left to right. Quakers will be going right to left. Team's kind of shaking hands here. And Is that you buzzing? Somebody's buzzing over here. I'm not buzzing. It wasn't me. All right, here we go. <clears throat> it's like Hecker and Herzog on the jump, and uh, DJ Isles comes out with it. So Christian Jones on the left wing. Now St. Joe's man to man. Oh, what a turnover. DJ Isles saw uh, Russell going one way, and he went the other, and he throws the ball out of bounds, and turns it over to the Mount St. Joe Lions. So a little uh, press. Man to man, little, little trap press right off the bat here for the Quakers. Throws it away. And it works. Mount St. Joe returns in favor and throws the ball out of bounds. Goes back to Wilmington. So a little bit of pressure by the Quakers. Patrick puts it in the aisles. Hecker. Isles has it on the left side. Hecker, three-pointer, no good. And it's rebounded by number 20, Finley of the Mount St. Joe. And he goes the other way. No, he's carrying the ball. No oh. oh, foul. Going to go back. Going back the other way. DJ Isles bringing the ball up for the Quakers. It's in to Patrick. He drives the right side nice. lane, puts it up, and it's good. Russell. So, the Quakers are all first spot. And we got a little uh, press, but Mount St. Joe has no problem breaking the press that time. Tied up. And number 10 gets, takes it all the way down, coast to coast, make it 2-2. Two to two. Isles the other way. Wilmington just passed the ball around the perimeter. Isles has it over on the left side. Drives the right side away and puts up a little oh. in her hand. Shot. It's good. And a fingertip roll there. Yeah. Yeah. I think. And we got a foul, I believe. Was it after it? No. No foul. No foul? No foul. I'm not sure what they stopped it for. They though. wanted to make sure I was up here again. Is that it? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. They get the ball in. Now St. Joe does. No problem breaking the press that time. Moving the ball around. Number one has it. Henry. 
He gives it back to Finley. Finley has that on top. Number 11 drives the hoop, tries to get over to 41. Lost the handle. Hurts him. Hurts him. He just wasn't ready for it. 42, Wilmington College ahead. 18 minutes, 12 seconds to go here in the first half. Isles bringing the ball up. We're playing halves. Halves with 30 second clock. Patrick has it on top. It's a dead. Great feed. Oh! <laughs> Up Hecker. Hecker rolls it around the rim and falls off. No bucket. Got down to the big man. Wow. Off the ball. Christian Jones gets called for a foul off the ball. Push. This 41 is holding the Hertzel for Mount St. Joe. He's got the ball in his hands now. He's a load. Christian Jones going the other way. Goes right down the middle of the lane. Puts the shot up. No good. No foul. No blood. No foul so far today. Oh, oh, good block. On the other end. Oh, take Number it away. Three. Will Patrick gets the block and then gets the takeaway. Casey Jones says, get on down the court. Let's go. Piles has it out on top. Oh. Uh, Ball the other way. Hooker with a push away from the ball. So that's going to turn the ball back over to Mount St. Joe. Getz has it. It's being guarded by Isles. And they're going to call Isles Lock. with a foul. Into the game comes Peyton Smith. Isles heads to the bench. Got something going on over here with Casey Jones and uh, the bench are talking to the referee. They're going over the scores table. And we're not near the scores table, so we don't know what's going on for yeah, sure. Yeah, we're, we're right up now. in uh, the press box. I guess it's the press box. So we just wait here, eat some popcorn, and figure out what's going on. And they're not going to tell anybody what's going on. And we're still holding play up. Not sure what that was all about. Ball's inbounded to number 20, Finley. He has it out on the left. All right. That was traveling. Almost. Number one has it. Out to Getz. No good on the shot. Rebounded by number three, Patrick. He's bringing it back up the court for the Quakers. Shoots at the elbow, right elbow, no good. Rebounded by Holden Hurtsall. He's a big guy, folks. Nice. Novel of a number 30 there, Noah Chapman. He's on Hurtsall right now. <coughs> oh, nice one. Three pointer. <laughs> Andrew Finley. Some popcorn go down the wrong. Uh... <coughs> Here's the dead. Locked. That was locked out of bounds. It's the game with the ball. It's the first game popping with the ball. Popping with the ball. 16 Mount St. Joe, 5 to 4 lead. Wilmington inbounds underneath. Number 25 has it. Shots up. No good. That was by Nathan Scott. Going back the other way quickly. Great. Number, number one, one, Henry, Henry. And he drives Henry. right through the lane and puts the way up in. Nice Seven to four. Right yeah. Peyton Smith has it on top. Oh, 
Okay, that put back. Tristan Jones drove the lane. No good, but put back by Chapman. That's good. Seven to six. Levin drives the lane for uh, Mount St. Joe and dishes out. Finlay, three-pointer, no good. Oh, that was a foul. Oh, he stepped on the line. Stepped on the line. So he did take it away cleanly. He yeah. just stepped on the line, so it goes back over Chapman to the... Chapman got the rebound, but then... Uh, Quakers. ...was taken away by Getz, but then he stepped on the line. Peyton Smith bringing the ball back up. To the Quakers. Silver to Chapman. Smith. Oh, that yeah, charge. Charge called it. Away from the ball and Jordan Jones. Seven to six. Mount St. Joe on top. Those are the balls that those are the fouls they've called have been away from the ball. Oh, that's on block. Wow. Didn't look like a block to me. Chapman gets his first personal. Looked like a charge from up here. One thing was he started falling away a little bit too quick, and I think that might have hurt him. So Mount St. Joe brings it in underneath the room basket. They get the ball out to Jake Cropper. Back over to Finley. <clears throat> we got another big boy in there now. He is for, big, uh, isn't he? For Mount St. Joe. And the one nice cut to the basket. Puts the shot up. It's no good. Out it was out of bounds. It's going to stay with Mount St. Joe. So the Lions will retain. Yeah, Bobby Murdoch is in the game now. Yeah, number 54. He is. Uh, he looks like a football player. Well, him and uh, Holden Hurts are 41. Ball gets inbounded to Finley. He brings it back up to court. Pass over number 23 in the corner. Finley has a three-pointer. It's up. No good. Coming down the rebounds, number 12, William Green. 25 has it for Wilmington. Jordan Jones has it now. Working the ball on the outside. Three-pointer put up by Kevin Lewis. It's no good off the front of the rim. We're going back the other way. Cutting to the baskets. Big boy, they're going to call a charge on him. So that was uh, an equalizer there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, stand in there and take a charge against him. you got to give that guy a little bit of credit. Russell back in the game for the Quakers. 7-6, to 13-30 to go here. First half. Quakers is moving the ball on the outside. Three-pointer put up by number 25, Short. That was Scott. Wilmington gets its own rebound. Scott has it again, thinking about it again. That's a two-pointer, but it's no good. That line was a little long. And quickly down the floor comes uh, Mount St. Joe. Number one, Henry has it. They get it into Murdoch. <laughs> oh, he's a bull. <laughs> Number 12 trying to guard him, but did a pretty good job. William Green. Oh, nice move, but down, it's out. down the other way. Number four with a shot. Oh. That's Kevin Lewis. So no foul? Well, I think we have a foul. Yeah. Hey, this Sunday night at 7 o'clock on TalkTV.us or other network, we've got the Sports Planet. We're going to be talking about all the big college uh, D1 uh, games coming up uh, this next week. Not this Sunday, but obviously, uh, or when I say not this Sunday, Sunday is the is the uh, NFL. Yeah, but Sunday we will have on uh, Talk TV on the Sports Planet Sunday night, seven o'clock from Generations Pizza here in Wilmington, Ohio. We'll be talking uh, college football and the big games: Ohio State, Michigan, 
And uh, Alabama, all the big games coming seven up the following to six. week. Now St. Joe on top, 7-6, Wilmington with basketball. Wilmington can't buy a basket here the last couple of minutes. Yeah, they've been frozen here. Three-pointer off again by Andrew Russell. Getz has it down from Mount St. Joe. He's being guarded out front by Russell. Stolen away by number four, Kevin Lewis. Going back the other nice way. Pass. Nice pass. Great foul. Down to William Green. And that puts Wilmington on top. Eight to seven. Nice little lay in by Green. Herzl is back in the game. He has the ball right now. Shot, long three-pointer. Hit the thing above. That was by uh, Getz, and it's no good. So it's going to turn the ball back over to the Quakers. And DJ Isles back in the game. Christian Jones is in the game. Isles bringing the ball up. Just under 12 to play here in the first half. Miles has it on the left wing. I tell you, Romy just fast. They got some fast guys on this team. Three. 25. Shot. No Over goal. the back. <laughs> Foul's going to be called on number two, Christian Jones. That's going to be his second. Lions have it under the uh, basket here to He's bring it in. out. Will Patrick back in the game. Mount St. Joe bringing it. Wilmington still showing a little press. About to throw the ball away. Right they did. They did lose it. Yeah, Wilmington's going to have the ball under their basket. So some pressure by the uh, Fighting Quakers. Tyler Manor lost the ball out of bounds for uh, Mount St. Joe. Wilmington with the basketball after the turnover. Number three has it, Patrick. Travel. What are they saying? No, charge. Charge. Well, they're calling the charges. Moving screen, Will Patrick. Non-shooting foul, but something we have in the men's game, we don't in the women's game. We have the one and one now the rest of the time. Until That's right. You tell get up to ten, then it's two. No. Nope. Mount St. Joe has to call timeout. They can't get the ball in bounds. So Mount Mount St. Joe takes timeout. 11.20 to go in this first half of play. We are at uh, Fred Risk Arena on the campus of Wilmington College for uh, the Wilmington Mount St. Joe Men's Basketball Contest. Wilmington leading eight to seven. So far, Charlie, a lot of action, but a little scoring. <laughs> yeah, you figure we're almost halfway through the first half here. 15 points, that's not very much. Yeah, and that's the two teams combined, obviously. Yeah, but, yeah so I did that with... Common core? I didn't have common core math like you. Yeah. Well, I am much younger than you. Yeah. <laughs> that just goes your boy born on that leap here. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Don't trigger me now. I'm going to have to go to my safe space. Okay. Here we go. Jeez. Okay. Henry has the ball bringing it up from Mount St. Joe. They are down a point. 11-14 to go. Henry has it again. High on top. Wanting to get a pick set by the big man. Holden hurts her. Moving the ball around the outside. Stolen. Oh, oh almost stolen. stolen. Should have been stolen. Drives the bucket. Nice shot put up. But no good. Rebounded by number one, Jordan Henry. At the elbow, number 41. Holden hurts her. No good. And the rebound comes out to number 12, William Green. Wilmington has the ball. Hecker has it. Back over to William Green. 
Back to Hooker. Isles now on the right side. He's kind of the catalyst of this team. Shoots up, shoots up by 10 footer, no good. Rebounded by number 40, 6'8", Tyler Menal. Number 10 on the other side, three point attempt. That is Adam Getz, no good. Isles coming back the other way. Another rebound. Wide open, three pointer, no good. Didn't follow a shot. Andrew Russell follows a shot. He could probably get that and get another, get another chance, but thought he had it. Now St. Joe with the ball. Henry has it out here on the right wing. Gets it into Getz, who nice kind of throws it to Herzl, and Herzl gets his first points of the game. Nine to eight. Points are hard to come by here. Nine to eight. Riding the ball is number three, Patrick. He gets it stolen away by Getz. Getz goes the other way. He gets it's another up. bucket. So it should be 11 to 8 right now. Yeah, they've got 11 to 8. Now St. Joe. Wilmington with the basketball. Trying to get in the Hecker. He does a little turn around jump shot. No good. In and out. But Henry comes down with a rebound. She's driving the right side baseline. And he is challenged by number three, Patrick. And he blocks it. And DJ Isles comes out with it. Hecker, left side. Side not to go up against uh, Holden Hertzer. Holden Hertzer is 6 7. Shot, awkward shot there by uh, Andrew Russell. Oh, lost balance. Yep. He's struggling right now. He's. Now, Wilmington he's is struggling got, right uh, now. No, Russell, uh, he's, <laughs> he's only got one bucket. Number 40 from the right side. No good on the shot. Oh, look at him. Got him time out. All right, so a timeout with uh, 8.16 remaining in the first half of play. 11 to 8. Yeah, I mean, it's, I tell you what. What, is, well, here, what does this tell you? The field goal. Uh, <laughs> Wilmington is 4 of 19 for 21.1%. And Mount St. Joseph's not much better, 26.3%, 5 of 19. So uh, the shooting is uh, is terrible, to say the least. Not very good. For no. both teams. To wonder anybody's uh, head. Oh, I know. It's like there's a, a ring on that basket, keeping things out. Wilmington with five turnovers. Uh, Mount St. Joe with uh, six turnovers. Wilmington's 0 for 4 from the three-point line, and Mount St. Joseph uh, 1 for 8 from the three-point line. No team shooting any free throws. There uh, are uh, seven fouls for Wilmington and two fouls for Mount St. Joseph. 8-16 to go, 11 to 8 here in the first half. Mount St. Joe with the three-point advantage. But Wilmington's going to have the ball. Wilmington does have the basketball. Three-pointer could tie it up. See if they can cut this uh, cut this lead or, yeah, I can say tie it up. Even Isles has it way out on top. Gets it over to Kevin Lewis. Rock, Isles again on the right side. Lewis drives the left Ready. side of the lane. Yeah. And it gets it. 11-10. 7.50 to go here. First half. Some Pass pressure. Passes in to Bobby Murdoch. Some pressure again by the Quakers. You don't want Bobby Murdoch handling the ball, I don't think. Ball's knocked away. Nice pick. Miles has it. Wilmington's got a little a big guy in there now. Malcolm Pittman. Oh, nice cut by Pittman. Nice move. No hey, good. Pittman cuts the hole. No good. Wilmington Still keeps rebounding now. We'll get three, F, three attempts at least this time. 
Hiles has the left side. I like Pittman. Pittman brings a little excitement into the game. Three-pointer. In and out. He can't buy a basket. Well, make this got the ball it. again. Good. Number four, Kevin Wood. Is this the first lead for Wilmington? Huh? Is that the first lead for Wilmington? I think it might be. 12 to 11. First lead in a while, we'll say that. That's for sure. 20 going to the bucket. That is Andrew Finlay. Pretty much unchallenged there. Went up with the left hand. Nice shot. 13 to 12, six minutes to go here, first half. Oh, oh traveling called on uh, Jordan Jones. Lions gonna bring it in underneath the Wilmington basket. Noah Chapman back in the game, freshman. To get the ball into uh, Getz. Once again, Wilmington putting the pressure on. Nice wow, move. Nice move, yeah. Finley's kind of wanting to take control here a little bit, and that could be bad for the Quakers. They better get him under control quick. Throws the ball's almost thrown away. Kevin Lewis saves it out there. Chapman has it. Number 10. Thought about a three. Devin Lewis has it again. Six seconds. Ball's knocked away. Two seconds. Isles shot up and That's good. Bad. Long three-pointer. Tied up, 15 all. That was the hope and the prayer, both. Heading the other way, it's going to have to be a foul here on number 10. Jordan Jones, that's going to be his second. Going the other way. So we're going to go the, the line now and shoot one and one. Jake Cropper. Heading the line. The sophomore from Georgetown, Ohio. In Brown County. Yes, sir. First one's up, and good. So now we'll have the back end of the one and one. 16-15, Mount St. Joe up, about five minutes left to go. Second one's up, and it's good as well. 17-15, Wilmington with the basketball. Peyton Smith has it. He's bringing the ball up. Back to Peyton Smith. He's working the ball around the outside. Lewis has it. Back to Patrick. Patrick shoots it just inside the key. No good. We'll have a foul on number 23 on the floor. Yeah, he was pushing off on Kevin Lewis. That's going to be on Jake Crawford. So Wilmington will retain possession. And they're going to have it underneath their basket. 17 to 15. Now St. Joe on top. And the whole time finding a place to put in. Finally gets it out to Lewis out on top. Over to Patrick. Chapman. Lewis on the left side. Oh! Miss Chapman cutting to the basket. Patrick has it on the right side. He goes, drives the lane. Tries to put a little underhand up. No good. And it's off. Back to the line. Chapman. So 17-15, 4.22 to go. First half. Lucky he didn't get a reach in foul there. Yep. Wilmington still putting on the uh, pressure. Yep. Finley has that on top. Oh, three-pointer. 
No good. I think they're going to call out on uh, Hertzel. Yeah, 41 Hertzel with the foul. So the Quakers, they have the ball. Trailing by two. Four minutes left in this uh, first half of play. Inbound the ball with Quakers. Oh, I thought he was going to take him. Looks like we might have went to a little one two two, didn't we? It looked like they changed up. <laughs> looked like uh, you know, St. Joe went to a little one two two uh, zone. So that was a charge. Wow. That's Jones' third foul. Yeah. No foul away from the ball. Well, anytime you have an offensive foul, uh, even though you're in... Yeah, they don't want to shooting yeah. Right. The other team gets it. They don't get to shoot. Finley to inbound. Gets it in to Eric Edwards. I haven't said his name too much tonight. Back to Finley. Over to Henry. Back to Finley, out on top. Finley again on top, drives the left side of the lane. Nice. It's a nice shot up, that's good. Largest lead so far for uh, Mount St. Joseph. Finley has nine of uh, Mount St. Joseph's 19 points. Yeah, uh, Quakers need to get a bucket here. Don't need to get back, get down any further than four. 19 to 15. Nice pass underneath. They bring it back out. Didn't do anything with it. Patrick has it. Five seconds, four seconds. Pulls up. Uh, shoots it. No good. Just a long two, but no good. Going back the other way. Jordan Henry has it over to Finley. Henry has it out here on the right wing. Only can still play man up. Hurts a two-pointer, no good. Ball brought down by Patrick, going the other way. Peyton Smith has it. Bottom movement. Nice. Uh, had a nice shot underneath, but just missed it. Out of bounds. Wilmington retains. Holden Hurts will try to get it out. <laughs> Tomorrow, Charlie, we've got uh, 69 degrees, and uh, Thursday, we've got 70 degrees. Uh, it's going to be warm towards the end of the week. We're going to have good football weather uh, for those teams that are still in the playoffs. And uh, then we're going to get maybe some flurries on the weekend. Uh, they can keep all that. We don't need any of that. Wilmington gets the ball in. Driving the lane, number 12. William Green. His second bucket of the night. 1917, two minutes to go here, first half. Jordan Henry has that on top. Down St. Joe, working the ball around. Finley has it now, he tries to drive left side lane. Dish is off, three pointer by Manhall, no good. Isles comes down with it, gets it over to Kevin Lewis. Back to Isles. Green. Back to Isles. Nathan Scott. It's over to Kevin Lewis. Isles. Back out. Three pointer, no good. By Nathan Scott. One minute. One minute left to play here. First half. 19-17. Drive to the bucket by Edwards. No good. Isles coming back the other way. They get it underneath. Nice pass to Chapman. And it's good. 
All right, we're tied up. 19 all. 36 seconds here to go. Now St. Joe with the basketball. Lions probably go for the last shot here. Now well, they can't. Now they really can't because of the clock. Yeah, yeah, we got six second differential with the shot clock, the game clock. Oh, that's good. Oh, well, they're, they're pushing and shoving underneath down here. Chapman and uh, Gordon Henry. A little chippiness here. And the bucket is good by Henry, and he got fouled by Lewis. So Jordan Henry shoot the bonus here. 21 to 19. Try to make us a three-point play. All right. It's up, and it's good. Jordan Henry with five points on the night. 22-19, 15 seconds here. Wilmington can cut it to one or even tie it up on a three. Miles with the basketball. Long three-pointer. No good. That's it. That was by uh, William Green. And we end the half, 22-19. Leading scorer so far for Mount St. Joseph, Andrew Finley has nine. Jordan Henry has five. Getz has four. Cropper two. Hertz are two. For Wilmington College, Kevin Lewis has four. DJ Isles has five. William Green has four. Andrew Russell two. And Noah Chapman four. Quakers are shooting 27.3% uh, at the half, 9 of 33. And uh, Mount St. Joseph, the Lions are shooting 33.3%, uh, 9 of 27. Uh, Wilmington has made one three-pointer, one of eight. And uh, Mount St. Joe, uh, one of ten. Uh, free throws, Wilmington has shot no free throws or made no free throws. And uh, Mount St. Joe, uh, three of three for 100% at the free throw line. Turnovers, uh, Wilmington has seven, Mount St. Joe has seven. Points off turnover, both teams with six points. Uh, rebounds, Wilmington with 23, Mount St. Joe with 19. Wilmington had 10 fouls in the first half, and Mount St. Joe, four. Bench points, Wilmington had 12 points off the bench. Mount St. Joe, two points off the bench. Once again, a reminder, we are box casting this event tonight. You can catch that on WilmingtonQuakers.com. And as always, Campus Nation has the live audio tonight, and we'll have our HD delayed video available tomorrow evening for both the uh, Lady Quakers as well as the men on our website, CampusNation.com. The Sports Animal, your home for high school and college sports. So, Charlie, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, some exciting football that last game of the season. Uh, we had a uh, an upset, so to speak, with, uh, with uh, John Carroll. John Carroll defeating uh, Mount, Union. Mount Union. And uh, they may meet in the playoffs. That's a possibility. I'm, sh I'm sure that uh, they would like to meet in the playoffs. I heard they actually help Mount Union out in the playoffs. Right. They actually have an easier way to go. Which doesn't make any sense. But yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Good luck to both of them. I mean, you know, OAC schools, you got to gotta read for them. That's right. But that was a heck of an upset here today. I think everybody was shocked at that. That was the first time since, what, 2006 they've it's, been beat? It has. It has been a while. Great. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We're at halftime. The uh, Lions lead the Quakers 22 to 19. Anybody's ball game still. I don't think the cheerleaders are throwing out footballs tonight. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Nobody's bringing us pizza. That's a little joke. I think they made them stop. They were hurting too many. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
Oh no, they hit me in the foot one night. <laughs> and that's hard to do. And they hit a... feet are so tiny. One of them hit their moms in the face. <laughs> <laughs> somebody broke somebody's glasses. Was that football? <laughs> Those little plastic white ones they throw. So I think they put an end to that. Once again on our schedule on the TalkTV.us network, our sister network, uh, the Sports Planet will be on this Sunday night at 7 o'clock from Generations Pizza, and we'll be talking football, uh, particularly uh, for the week after, which will be the big uh, Buckeye-Wolverine uh, contest. AJ and I have a little side wager there, uh, uh, just a, a small wager, and... Uh, Yep. Well, I tell you what, you know, and we'll have some more keep calm and chaz on. So we just have a little take a little break. So but we'll get back to that here soon. We might have to do some of that to promote my uh, Valentine show. <clears> oh, <throat> you old car guys, if you like old car shows? February 11th, 12th, out the Robert Center here in Wilmington, Ohio, we'll have the eighth annual Chaz's Valentine's Day car show. Yeah, it's, it's kind just, of hard to believe. I know. It seems like last year was the seventh. You know, so it was. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. I do. Yeah. Who knows how long it'll last? So. Eight right. years. That's not a bad run. Our, our stats girl is bringing the stats up. Well, good. After you already told everybody all of them. Well, that's all right. We like to see her come up. <laughs> our little ginger girl here. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. We've got two of the same thing. Looks like it. It's one for you and one for me. Yeah. That way you can read part of them and I can read the other part. But we did that already. How many lead changes do we have? It should tell us on there. I don't know. You'll have to look and see. I don't have the stats. Well, maybe they don't say it on this one. Usually they tell you how many lead changes. Well, we've had some exciting basketball tonight. The Lady oh, Quakers, uh, they pulled out a, a win, uh, a last-minute three-pointer uh, by Mary Moyer. Won it for the Lady Quakers earlier tonight over uh, the Denison Big Red. And tonight, uh, at the half, 22 to 19, we have Mount St. Joseph, the Lions, over the uh, Fighting Quakers, the men, 22 to 19. And uh, the game will resume in about uh, nine and a half minutes. Nice crowd tonight. It's whiteout night. So everybody's wearing their white. Except for Charlie, who's wearing the Campus Nation red. That's right. But you're allowed to wear the Campus Nation red, Charlie. Let me get some Campus Nation shirts. That'd be nice. Yeah. I think we ordered those about three years ago. They just haven't got here yet. Oh, but you ordered them. Um, it's at Amazon Delivery. It's uh, awfully slow. And I even had Amazon Prime. You'd think that they would uh, get it here sooner. You told Travis about that. Yeah. Now, you're planning on covering a little bit of the other schools, too, in basketball? Oh, absolutely. And any time we get an opportunity to cover schools other than, obviously, Wilmington or Beaver Creek, or you know, and that's the same thing in the other sports as well. Uh, and, of course, we cover the teams when they compete against those two schools. But uh, uh, we've done games at East Clinton when they've played other teams other than Wilmington. And uh, we've been to uh, greenfield McLean, your school there, Charlie. And yep. we've, we've covered some of their games when they play uh, other teams. So uh, when we get the opportunity and we have openings in our schedule, we always like to fill them with teams from the area. Uh, and, of course, our area has expanded a little with the addition of the Beaver Creek Beavers, my alma mater. Uh, it brings in some of the G-Walk schools. Um, should be fun. We'll see some of those teams. Right. And, of course, with the change in the league next year, we're going to be seeing a whole host of new schools that Wilmington will be competing against. So you're still going to follow Wilmington next year in the new league? I'm sure that we will, and, and I'm sure that they'll want us to. And well, we kind of talked about one time maybe not doing it. Well, I think... Well, I'll tell you what. Well, we may, terrible what we may... Well, that's the thing. We may expand our schedules because we, we're talking about going to maybe 10 simultaneous games or at least the ability to do that. 
Uh, some of them will be audio only, some of them will be uh, audio and video. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, maybe three or four crews out that will do audio and video, and then the rest, uh, you know, some... Uh, Five or six, uh, seven uh, will be uh, audio only, but uh, we'll have the ability to uh, to do more games uh, simultaneously than we have been in the past. But what we may do is we may limit uh, our games to uh, more of a home game situation rather than traveling away to the away games. Unless, you know, it's a hotly contested uh, game and then we might send our video crew out there to, to do an away game. A lot of times we had problems, like last year, we had problems with... Uh, Getting we, invoices. Well, when we were in Hill, Hillsboro, as well as uh, in their new gym, and also when we were uh, down uh, for Miami Trace, uh, their basketball arena, uh, we had problems having a live signal be able to get out of either one of those gyms. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a cell tower close to the Hillsboro uh, High School, the new high school, unless they're, they've put one up since then, but... Uh, uh, we just want, you know, we had to do our broadcast and, and, and uh, record it and uh, make it available, but uh, nothing was live, including the audio. So hopefully uh, uh, we'll reassess next year, uh, you know, what our plans are. And of course, Hillsborough won't be in that league, so no, you don't have to worry about that. Or Miami Trace. But we may end up with similar problems if we're traveling to, you know. Uh, well, the thing about down there, though, you're getting closer to the big city, too. Uh, what big city is that, Charlie? Cincinnati. Well, yeah, but you're still quite a bit away. Uh, you're closer than here. Now, now, you're in Claremont County for several of those schools. Right. Yeah, but once again, Wilmington is playing in the big school division, and some of the other teams like East Clinton and uh, Blanchester will be playing in the small school right. division. So a lot of it will just have to do with, uh, you know, when we're covering Wilmington, uh, what schools are in that big school division and uh, – what access we've got uh, to uh, coverage. Well. Five minutes here until we start the second half. What'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, of your team? You have a team? What team are you on? Oh, oh softball. softball. See, that'd be fun to do, some softball games. Amir doesn't want us to do it because Amir does the softball games. Amir, oh. Amir has a uh, license to do baseball and softball. He doesn't want us to do it. And I was saying, you know, put us on the bus and we'll go down to Florida with him. Yeah, heck yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Twenty-two, nineteen. Quaker man still walking around. But I found out something I didn't know. You didn't know this either. It's a Quaker girl. It's actually a Quaker girl. It's a Quaker girl today. But but see, I knew that. Quaker woman. Yeah, I Quaker had X-ray vision, Charlie. I could see that it was a female in the Quaker man's. See what he just said. Yeah. And you talk about diversity. A female inside a Quaker man. There you go. Yeah. Let's not even get me started on that. Let's not even get me started on that. I'm confused anymore. I'm glad I'm retired You're teaching confused? this year. Are you, are you telling us something, Charlie? Is there something nah. you want to tell us? You're confused? There's something I'd love to tell you, but I can't. All right. Well, someday you'll come out and we'll... Uh, we'll no, it's nothing like that. Okay. Well, it's, I just can't say. All right. Well, don't say it then, especially on the air. Exactly. Don't want to freak out our audience. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You're going to let it go. Right. How's that song go? Let it go. Let it go. Well, hopefully one we can get some turn, get it turned on here. Neither team has shot very well. Well, no. As we said, uh, Wilmington's shooting about 21%, and um, Mount St. Joe's not uh, shooting much better. 20, uh, put my glasses on here, 33.3%. Uh, that's only a third of the shots, Charlie. It's very warmly. I can do that new math. You sure? Or about maybe that? that's the old math. That's the old math. There right. you go. Yeah. Well, really, it's just how you arrive at what math it is. This is true. Wonder, uh, wonder what uh, the Bengals are going to do anything now. They're going to lose. <laughs> But that's all right. Now that you've come over to the light side, all right, I'll tell you what. The Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? I love the Cowboys. Of course, I used to live in Dallas, so that's how I got to be a big Cowboys fan. 
I've never really been a big Cowboys fan, but I'm a, I like Ezekiel Elliott, obviously, because yeah. Ohio State. So. Well, when you live in Dallas, about the only thing you do on Sunday is you go to church and then you go to watch the Cowboys. How far is Dallas from Houston? Well, um, I think it's probably about a five-hour drive. Is it that yeah. far? Yeah. Okay. Texas is a big, big oh, one state. In fact, to drive from Dallas to El Paso takes about, uh, I think it's 10, 12 hours. Wow. Yeah. So See, I've only, I've only been in Dallas like once. I just landed there and then left. But I remember going over to the old Cowboy Stadium. Right. Which was kind of cool. Down well, in it's that. no longer there. Yeah. And, of course, uh, both the baseball stadium and the football stadium are now in the mid-cities, Arlington. Uh, although uh, Irving was the location of the old Cowboy Stadium, but they built the new Cowboy Stadium right next to the uh, Texas Rangers, Rangers uh, baseball stadium. And they're all, I mean, it's all real close to Dallas. Now, that's the only mean. thing I could never get into when I lived in Dallas. I could not get into American League baseball. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, you got to see, like, the Yankees and some of the other teams like Boston. Uh, but uh, I just, I was never big. Now, I, I went to a couple games, like, at the beginning before they actually started the season. The, uh, the uh, Houston team would come up, the Astros, uh, before they went to the American League. And they would play... Uh, the Rangers, so I, I would like those games, but uh, just just didn't uh, didn't really get into American League baseball, especially back then when they had the designated runner along with the designated hitter. Twenty-seven seconds. Well, it was twenty-seven seconds, and it they stopped the clock. Right. So I think that means we're ready to go here. Sounds like it. Twenty minutes on the clock. Well, who's going to win this one? Is this going to come down to a barn burner end, too? Or is it going to be a... Well, we had the heart attack in game one. 22-19. Yeah, Mary Moyer, deep left field. Three-point bomb. Okay, and her daddy in. liked that. He was oh, all yeah. ecstatic about that. Heck yeah. Rick Moyer, our... Uh, County prosecutor, her daddy. You want to be on the good side of him? Absolutely. You don't want to meet him uh, in a courtroom. No. Well, looks like uh, Mount St. Joe is going to start off with the ball. And they're going to be going right to left on your right radio dial in their dark blue unis. Wilmington will be going left to right, and here we go. Holden Hertzel passes it in to Finley, and Finley takes it down, pulls it back out. He's on the left wing. He tries to go down the middle. Goes away and travel. Well, there was some intense Quaker pressure there, and it caused the turnover. No pressure by Mount St. Joe. Free, uh, easy to get it in. DJ Isles has the ball. Get it out to uh, Hecker. Over to Christian Jones. Back to Hecker. And almost wow. throws the ball away. Got it back. Hecker got it back. Shot Christian clock. Jones has it. Drives to the right side of the Foul. Gets fouled. I think he got fouled by number 11. I think that's what the Quakers need to do a little more of, is driving the lane and uh, going up and trying to draw the foul. Pretty aggressive. That's right. The girls were fairly aggressive yes. in the first game. 22-19. And uh, Christian Jones going to the line. Shoot two. The first one's up. And good. 22-20. Second one is up. No good. Rebounded by Eric Edwards. Going back the other way. Edwards has that on top. Gets it over to Henry. Henry has it on the left wing. Good one toward the right side. Hey, we are going to call an offensive foul on Holden Hertzel. <laughs> Holden 
I tell you, most of the fouls today, folks, have been called away from the ball. That's right. What's that say? I, I don't like it. I know that. Not that it makes any difference whether I like it or not, but I don't like it. Isles. Bring the ball down. 22-20. Wilmington behind two, but has the ball. Got a chance to tie or go ahead here. He has it back out on the left side. A lot of motion. Not about it. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Hecker has it. Tries to go baseline. But he gets fouled by number 54, Bobby Murlock. Pushed out of bounds. Looks like the uh, Isles going to pass it in to Hecker. Hecker tries to get down the lane, loses control of it. Christian Jones loses control of it. They had a up. jump ball, and it's going to stay with Wilmington. Uh, it's like there's grease on the ball or something. Nobody can hold on to it. Isles then bound. Patrick, excuse me, uh, Christian Jones has it. Number 14. Oh, nice turn around. Jumper. Andrew Russell. Pretty shot. 22-22. They need Russell to come alive. He's not afraid to shoot it, but he, he was pretty stone cold the first half. Thrown away. Stolen by Patrick. Goes down the other way. Misses the shot. Ball goes out of bounds. Out of Wilmington. He's going to go back to St. Joe. in the second period. Wilmington still showing a little press here. Put the ball in the gaps. Trap. Going to call a foul. Block. Foul's going to be called on Russell, I believe. That's his first. And we're not two minutes into this second half, and Wilmington's already had three fouls called against them. Or one foul called against them. Mount St. Joe's already had three called against them. Excuse me. How much threw the ball away? It did Mount St. Joe. Good. Three-pointer from the corner. That is number 11, Eric Edwards. It's his first points of the night. 25-22. Isles with the ball over on the right side. Another three-pointer put up. It's short. That was put up by Patrick, rebounded by Lewis. Another three. three-pointer put up. It's no good. And they're fighting for the ball out of bounds. And it's going to go to Mount St. Joe. Kevin Willis put a lot of effort in there, but still couldn't come up with it. So, Mount St. Joe's ball, 25-22. Again, one we can show a little press here. Mount St. Joe gets through it pretty easy. Jordan Henry with the ball, gets it over to Murdoch. Murdoch drives right side of the lane. No good. Rebounded by Lewis. Going down the other way. Number three. Nice. Will Patrick. Puts in the bucket. Wilmington within one. Stolen away by Kevin Lewis. 14 three pointer. Swish. Andrew Russell. Is it timeout time? Andrew Russell is getting hot, folks. Wow. And we got a foul on Andrew Russell on the reach. It's going to be his second. Team second. 27 25. Wilmington is up two. Mount St. Joe has the ball. Now 
11 drives, no good. That's uh, Eric Edwards. Hiles comes out with it, going the other way. Three-pointer, Three no good, short. Back out. Tried to save it, yeah, almost saved it. Shot was put up there by Lewis. One thing I like about Lewis, I like his shoes. You like them green shoes, Rick? Those are those lime green sort of uh, sparkly shoes. Kind of a mint green almost. Mint? I like them. Okay. You say potato, I say potato. Finley bringing the ball up. Get it back over to Henry out on top. Murdoch has it way out on top. He cuts the basket. They give it to him underneath. He bullies his way in there and scores nice. the bucket. Good little spin move there. Oh, stolen away. Thrown away by Isles. Oh. Well, Henry went up for the bucket, but he got blocked by Andrew Russell, but they called the foul on him. And he'll be shooting two. Yes. 27-27. 15-45 to go. Henry at the line. First one's up. Good. Second one's up. No good. Rebounded by Nathan Scott. Back down the other way. So the line up by one has it. William Green hits it to Pittman. He throws it away. Going back the other way is number one, Henry. He pulls it back out. Gets it over to Finley. Murdoch has it way out on top. Over to Manow. They try to throw it underneath to Murdoch. He can't handle it. Gets knocked out bounds. But will stay Mount St. Joe's ball. He looks like he's got a tip out at about 250, wouldn't you say? I'd say. A big boy. Holding Herzl back in the game. Ball thrown in to Manow. Now to Herzl. Herzl. Fadeaway jumper, no good. Rebounded by Chapman. Going the other way. Three. Three-pointer from corner misses everything. Wilmington had the rebound, and it stays with Wilmington. Jordan Jones with the shot. Rebounded by Nathan Scott. Gets knocked out of bounds. It's still Wilmington's ball. Holden Herzl comes back out quickly. Wilmington has the ball. Down a point. Nice pass. Oh, great. Great thing. Nice cut to the basket by Chapman. 29-28. Lead going back and forth. Long three. Long three. No good. Balls on the Tied ground. Up. Tied up. They're fighting all over for it. Time out. Ball by Mount St. Louis. So they retain possession. With Wilmington leading 29-28, 14 3 3 remaining in this uh, second half of play. I'll tell you what. We got to, uh, the first one was a barn burn. Two this good games. This one's been a barn burner so far tonight. And the Lady Quakers will be back in action. Uh, this will be the Hampton Inn Tip-Off Classic. And uh, that will be on Friday or Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. And we'll be back to cover all four games. So Wilmington will play in each of the two games. And then the other two teams that we'll cover as well. You can uh, check the Campus Nation website. We'll have all that information here posted in the next day or two. There's the drums, Charlie. Yep. Twenty-eight 
28, 14, 23 to go here. Quakers up one. Each team has three fouls, which, you know, is a little bit more important than, like, the girls' game because, you know, each get to seven. They we're shooting one and one, and they get to ten, and we're shooting two. St. Joe has it from the corner. No good. Rebounded by Green. Wants to run. Back the other way. Oh. Almost made it to Chapman underneath. And uh, now St. Joe comes out with it. Oh! I got the rim and dropped it. Three-pointer up there by Henry. So Lyons now with a two-point lead. Nice cut underneath, but passes wasn't there. Wilmington with the basketball, down two. Christian Jones had it on top. Gets it to Green. Green gets hammered as it goes up underneath. That'll be in the act of shooting. Two shots. William Green's a freshman, Rick. He's pretty good. I like him so far. Lots of effort. Well, I mean, he is a freshman. Yep. Huh? William Green. She didn't catch it. Yep. First one's up. And it's good. They don't, like, put freshmen in lockers anymore or anything like that, do they? I don't know. No. 31 to 30. This is a tie it up. And no good. Rebounded by Eric Edwards. And we're heading back the other way. Getz has it. Got a foul. William Green with the foul, reaching in. We'll give a shout out to uh, our compadre, A.J. Ganger, also a Wilmington College graduate. He's out there listening to us, A.J. Howdy. Adam Getz with the ball from Mount St. Joe. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, stays with Mount St. Joe. 31 to 30. Now St. Joe on top with the ball. Jordan Henry going to take it out. Gets it to Getz. Getz has it out on the right wing. Feeds it underneath. The foul is called on 14. And that's his fourth foul, also. That's kind of a cheapy. The outside ref called it. The one underneath was closest to it. Didn't even say anything. Cheap foul there. Cheap foul for us. So that's his fourth. That could come into play. Yeah, because yeah, he started. Yeah, he did finally hit a couple shots there. Gets has it. Travel? I think they're going to call that one on number 10. Number 10 of Wilmington, Jordan Jones. That's his third. Calling some ticky tack stuff. They right are ticky tack, yeah. Now St. Joe inbounds the ball. Number one, Jordan Henry. He has it on the right side, being guarded by DJ Isles. Underneath, Eric Edwards. Another foul? Wow. I couldn't tell whether that that was a foul or a travel. He called that on Isles. And that's the seventh real quick. Yeah, so we're going to see one and one now. I don't see my good buddy Mike Snarr in the crowd, so if he's listening at home, hey, 
Casey Jones must be uh, just live. Or Casey Hunt, I'm sorry. Casey Hunt must just be living over there. First two shots up. That's good. good by Edwards. Two point lead now. That one's good as well. Okay, three point 33 lead. 30. Kind of a low scoring game. Yep. 12 32 to go. Wilmington with the ball, but down three. Working the ball around the outside. Three, three pointer. pointer. Tied up. No good. Ball goes underneath. It's rebounded by Getz. He's going to clear down the other way. He loses it. Isles gets it. And he's in a horse race. Nice. Nice. Henry, but he makes it. It's the bucket. Quakers within one now. 12 minutes to go. Foul. So we're going to go back and shoot another one on one. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's. Wow. I, I'm not sure why the referees are tightening it up. We're not, we're not down there. Maybe they're getting a little more vulnerable down there or something. Gets. First one puts it in, 34-32. That's good. Miles bring it up. 12 minutes left to go, 35-32. Miles dribbling around the left side. Dishes it off to Patrick. Patrick with a fadeaway jumper. No good. Take it away. Oh, another Still shot put up. No good. Oh. Tyler Manow oh, with two good rebounds from Al St. Joe. It does look like it's getting a little bit, a little chippier yeah. under the basket there on both sides. Patrick bringing it back down. Loses the ball. Manow ends up with it. Lions still with a three-point lead, 35-32. Getz has the ball out front. Good defense being applied by Patrick. Oh, almost. Throwing away almost there. Oh, nice play. And count the basket. Yep. One point. Man out. Oh. Drive the basket. Just run over. Uh... So once again, Lions up to their largest lead by five. Will Patrick. Will and this Patrick could be six. Draws a foul. Man out. Just goes in. Runs right over and gets the bucket. But Man out. Uh, Patrick wasn't set. So it's 37-32. Man out. Trying to get the three-point conversion here. Let's see. Does he get it? No. no. Rebound by Lewis. Back over to DJ Isles. DJ Isles way out on top, almost near half court. Doing a little traffic directing. He took it down the right side of the lane, dished it out to number four, Kevin Lewis. No good there. And Mount St. Joe comes down with it. They've gotten some good open shots for three. They just haven't been hitting them. Oh, they haven't hit anything all game. Getz got the ball out on top for uh, Mount St. Joe. Throws it underneath. Uh, nice little shot there by Ed. Eric. They need a timeout here. Little right hand hook. Starting to get away Ten. from us here. Ten minutes. There's your timeout. Yep. Okay, so the uh, Quakers call timeout. It's 39-32 with just over 10 minutes to play in this ballgame. Yeah, the script on their website is uh, having problems. So, yep, seven-point 
Mount St. Joe advantage. I tell you, Wilmington, it's, I mean, they've had a bunch of fouls. They've got nine fouls called against them this half. Mount St. Joe's only got four. Neither team still shooting very well. Yeah. Wilmington, 29.2%, four of 40, or 14 of 48. Uh, the uh, Lions, uh, they are 14 of 38, and that's 36.8%. Not getting real good shot selection. Yeah. Uh, Wilmington with 10 turnovers, Mount St. Joe with 13 turnovers, and uh, Wilmington now with 19 fouls, Mount St. Joseph with 8 fouls. All right. Isles has the ball. Tucker has it now out front. I go to Isles on the left wing. Christian Jones on top. He's playing with three fouls. Nice drive by by, uh, Kevin Lewis and dishes it off to Hecker. Wilmington putting some pressure on again. 39-34. Getz has it way out on top. Yes, tries to drive the right side of the lane. Puts up kind of a crazy shot. No good. Three-pointer, number one. No good for uh, it's out on Wilmington. Oh, out on Wilmington. Yeah, Henry had a nice chance at a three-pointer there, but missed it. Then the ball bounced out of bounds. Back to Mount St. Joe. And Wilmington the last to touch it. They'll be inbounding the ball underneath their own basket. Ball, inbound the ball to Finley. He has it out on top. It's the left part of the lane. Dishes it back out. Long oh, three-point attempt. Yeah, no. no good by Manow. Wilmington comes up with the rebound. Heading back the other way. Houston Jones thought about the long three. What do we got? I think we got foul on 20. Foul on Finlay. That's his first. And only the uh, fifth foul for uh, the Lions in this half. Miles inbound. Gets it out to uh, Kevin Lewis. Back over to Isles on the left side. Christian Jones has it way out on top. He tries to drive the lane, back out the aisles, three-pointer. No good, it hit the line up above. Once again, through those three-pointers, just not falling Wilmington's way. I think we might have a technical foul called here. Against Wilmington. So who was it on? Kevin Lewis. Number four, Kevin Lewis just got called for a technical foul. I think he just ran his mouth or something, it looks like. All right, so we're going to have two shots for the technical. Finley, first one is up and good. Rattles around, but falls in. The second one is good, too. And the Lions will have the ball. Yeah, 41-34. Not sure exactly what happened. I don't know if uh, Lewis was running his mouth to the official or just running his mouth to one of the Mount St. Joe players. I think it would be the official that would probably uh, result in a technical like that. I don't think they would do it just because he was mixing it up with uh, one of the other players. I wouldn't think. But I tell you, they've been calling stuff so ticky tack. Right there is push off by number one of Mount St. Joe. No call. Now we're going to call Carl Wilmington. Carl Wilmington for the foul. William Green on the reach. Which William Green did reach in, but there was already a push off. Not once, but maybe three times prior to that. By uh, 
Jordan Henry from Al St. Joe and uh, no call. So, doesn't make much sense. 41-34. That's probably what uh, Lewis was saying too. Shots up and good. By Henry. He's got 10 on the night. Just over eight minutes remaining in this ball game. Roman just gonna have to get busy. Tell them to cut the drums out. That's what they're doing. Can't do that while they're uh, shooting foul shots and stuff. So now the crowd's gonna make sure they inject a little bit of noise. Shots up. That's good. So, Mount St. Joe kind of starting to roll away here. 42 to 34. Wilmington with the basketball. By no means out of this, but they kind of feel like they're playing about eight guys right now instead of five. Hecker drives the lane. No good. It was a nice shot. Just too strong. Finley comes out with it. Get over to Edwards. Back out to Jordan Henry. Jordan Henry goes right side. Over to Manow. Shot on the left Sorry. side by Cropper. No good. Isles comes out with it for the Quakers. Three-pointer by Jones. No good. Kind of rush there. Nine-point Lion advantage over the Quakers. And they have the ball. Foul. Isles with another foul. It's going to be his third. That makes ten now. So now we're shooting two all the way out. Jake Copper at the line, shooting two now for the Mount St. Joseph Lions. First one's up, no good. 43-34. Russell back in the game. Shots up, and it's good. No, a 10-point lead. 10-point advantage now. Biggest lead of the game, Mount St. Joe. William Green has it, gets it over to long three-pointer. It misses everything, does Andrew Russell. Going back the other way. Finley had it, no good. Wilmington comes out with it. the numbers. Isles on the way up. That's good. 34-36. Pressure by Wilmington. Ball's kicked out of bounds. Stays with Mount St. Joe. Six twenty-six left to go here. Corner gets nice. Great corner. Forty-seven thirty-six. Six minutes to go. Eleven point lead. Not looking good. See if Wilmington can get their souls back in this. Number 25 shoots it up. 
That's uh, Scott, and it's no good. Yeah, Wilmington, it just seems like there's been a lid on the basket all night for Wilmington. I mean, they just not shooting well at I, all. Well, it's not just that. I don't think they're taking good shots. Right. That's the problem. You don't take good shots, you're not going to make them. Gets with it. Tries to drive down the right side. Gets it over to Finley. Takes away. Gets it knocked away. It looked like a kick, but they didn't call it. Green, three-pointer. Need more of those. Eight-point lead for the Lions. 37-39. Still well within reach for Wilmington. <laughs> Here comes uh, Kevin Lewis back in the game. Hopefully he won't get any more technicals. Gets has it. Gets it taken away. Lewis has it going the other way. Gets out the green. Three-pointer. No good. Now St. Joe comes down with the rebound. Finley has it. Crosses midcourt. Hits it over to Edwards. Gets has it now out on top. Edwards. Now. I think they're going to call out on number Charge. one. Number one. That was under the basket. Away from Henry. Yeah, he just, he laid out one of the Quaker players there. Just flat out laid him out. Away from the ball. I think it was 14. I think it was Russell he laid out. Got a timeout. Forty-seven, thirty-nine. Eight points. Not. Game's not over yet. Four Wilmington's minutes, fifty seconds. Comeback. Comeback. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Wilmington's been making a little comeback here. They were down eleven. I think the main time. thing that they're going to need to do is concentrate on taking good shots, not just rushing their shots, right. not just going down the court and throwing one up. Right. That's been the problem uh, in this second half. Too many bad shots. Yeah, there has been a lot of bad shots. First Mount Union's a pretty good ball team, too. I tell you what, this uh, Jordan Henry and Andrew Finley, Gats, they're, they're three pretty good leaders. Henry's a junior. Finley's a junior. Gats, that Adam Gats is only a freshman. And guess where Getz is from? Uh, let's see. Uh, a freshman from St. Henry. St. Henry. Kentucky. 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 Yeah. Erlanger, Kentucky, St. Henry down there. Oh, well, there's a St. Henry in Ohio. I know. Oh, nice cut to the basket. Oh. They got wow. fouled by Edwards. Nice cut to the basket there by uh, Russell. That's Edwards, third. Russell will go to the line here, shoot two. And this is a better yet if you can get points while that clock's not moving. First one's up. That's yeah. good. Next one's up. And it's good. 47-41, six points. Quakers trying to claw their way back into this. Yep. Pressure. Edwards has it. Crosses midcourt. He calls Time timeout. Out. Nice. They had him trapped out there trying to avoid the five-second call. Good defense on the part of the Quakers. 30-second timeout. We resume action before 29 and uh, 17 on the shot clock. Wilmington needs to try to limit Mount St. Joe to one shot. Get the rebound, go down, and make a good shot on their end. I 
I tell you, there was a stretch here. They, Wilmington couldn't do anything. They were just fouling, fouling, fouling. Just a reminder, our HD video will be available for both game one, the ladies game and the men's game tonight. Uh, we'll have it tomorrow night on the CampusNation.com website. If you missed the ladies game, you guys need to watch it. Right. That was a great game. Great ending, too. Great ending. Once again, Balls passed in to get the pressure on. Gets has it out on the right side. Shoots up a three-pointer, no good. Follows a shot there. Lions retain. Finlay has it now out on top. Tell you, I like it when they follow shots. That's a lost start anymore. Finlay has it. Gets rid of it to Edwards. Edwards has a turn around. Back to Shark. Back to uh, Henry, no good. Wilmington comes out with it. Willow Green, William Green. Once again, good shot selection is what we Devin need here. Lewis has it out on top. He goes down the left side of the lane, throws up a little runner, didn't stand a chance. He's being guarded pretty heavily there. What I meant about good shot selection. Yep. Force it, you can't force it. Henry has it. Oh! They're going to call in for the foul. Oh, we had a nice steal there, but it didn't happen. So we're going to be shooting uh, two, two shots. And Jordan Henry will go to the line, shoot two. Shots up good. Foul is on uh, Christian Jones. That's his fourth. Second one's up and good. Eight point lead. 49 41. Just over three to play here. In the second game for a doubleheader. Three. Three pointer. In, in and out. out. Yeah, that was a good shot. Yeah, it was. about that shot. No, that was there. a good shot. Jordan Henry brings it back down from Mount St. Joe. Yeah, Will Patrick was open on that shot. Just didn't go. Nice follow there by Eric Edwards. Miles going the other way. Long three point. Good. And we got a timeout. Andrew Russell starting to get hot. 51 to 44. Seven points. Two minutes, 41 seconds to go here in the ball game. Wilmington needs a couple stops, Rick. That's right. Oh, goodness. <laughs> 51 44. Now, St. Joe basketball up seven. Edwards the inbound. Wilmington still showing a little pressure. Getting the gets. Isles is on him. Almost taken away. Almost it is taken, taken away. away. It is taken away. Back out. Three pointer. No good. Wilmington's just struggling shooting. Not not from the three point line. That's their problem. Yeah. They just haven't been able to hit most of the threes. Finley has it way out on top. Just burning a little clock here. Two minutes left to play in the game. Ten seconds on the shot clock. He goes right down the middle of the lane. Misses it. Wilmington comes up with a rebound. 
Get out to William Green. Can't take too much time. Nope. Drives the bucket. Clock. Out of bounds. 14 seconds on the shot clock. That's Will Patrick on the shot. Christian Jones coming back in. Minute 41 left in this ball game. Smith heading to the side. No, excuse me, Jordan Jones heading to the side. Will Patrick. DJ Isles has it, drives the lane. No foul called. Blocked. And he loses the ball. A minute 30 to go. Mount St. Joe. Seven points and the basketball. Trying to trap him. Gets has it. Nice pass Wide underneath open. to number 11. Well, that's the problem. When you try to trap, someone's going to be open. Going the other way, number 14. Picks it up. And in. Time out again, Wilmington. Just Russell, over a minute now. Russell's got 14 tonight. Quakers. Quakers down by seven. Jordan Henry, 13 for uh, Mount St. Joe. Getz has got nine. Edwards, 11. Finley, 11. And several with two and three and all that. Chapman has six for the Quakers. William Green has seven. DJ Isles has nine, but Andrew Russell has 14. He's the leading scorer. Rick Phillips and Charlie Hargrave, CampusNation.com, the sports animal. Bringing you uh, college basketball. The high school basketball season is going to start uh, around December the 2nd. And we'll have all the action with Wilmington and with the uh, tournament that they'll start off in, as well as Beaver Creek, my alma mater. Mount St. Joe inbounds. Number one has it, Jordan Henry. Gets it over to Finley. One minute left to go. I think it's all over but the shouting here, Charlie. Looks like it. Shot up by number 40, no good. That rebound. Now St. Joe gets the rebound. They can burn a lot of clock here. As they just fouling. Still Wilmington forced to foul. Howes on number 14. Russell, that's his fifth. Well, when this game's over, I hope you don't mind, but I will need to cut right out. Yeah, go ahead. Because my daughter is uh, going to be waiting for me to pick her up. Well, we don't, in court we don't want her to, uh, to have to wait. Besides, we know how those... Uh, Let's see, she's 14, right? Yeah, 14 year olds are kind of impatient. Yeah. What is she doing there? Well, I teach at Greenfield. She goes to Greenfield, but they had play practice tonight, and the director lives in Courthouse. So, so she's, she's a thespian, right? She's going to take her to Courthouse, and I'm going to pick her up there. 33.2 seconds, 53 to 46. Shots up, good by Jordan Henry, 54 to 46. 30 seconds to go, Isles has the ball. Shoots up a three, no, no good. good. Wow. wow. So we're gonna come back down to the yep. other end of the court, shoot two. Fifty-four to forty-six. Fifty. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. I got that. I see that. I see that. At the line, Edwards puts the first one up and in. Well, we can make it a ten-point lead here. Let's see, sinks this. 
Second what she does. Up and good. All right, 56-46, 25.5 seconds. Got to shoot the ball, boys. Everybody yeah, just get one out. Green drives the bucket, Why puts it up, and good. 56-48. No more fouls out. No. Don't call foul. And I think some of the fans are heading for the yeah. uh, course. The party's over. But I tell you what, Wilmington splits two tonight. Wilmington College girls. Wow, what a game! Winning in the last seconds to beat Denison. Man, this game was really competitive up until the last 10 minutes here. Yeah, now St. Joseph started to pull away after yeah. that. 58-48. Patrick shot up. No good. Rebounded by Finley. Six seconds. They're just going to leave him alone. He's going to cross midcourt. And that's it. Well, folks, we'll see you maybe this weekend. And uh, everybody have a nice evening. Rick will bring you some stats here at the end of the game. But I, I've got to leave. Got to pick up your order. So have a good evening. All right, so your final score, the Mount St. Joseph Lions 58, the Wilmington uh, Quakers 48, 10-point win for Mount St. Joseph. Uh Wilmington shot 29.9% in the game. They were 20 of 67. Uh, Mount St. Joseph, 33.3%, 17 of 51. Neither team really shooting that great. Uh, Three-point uh, land, Wilmington was 4 of 25 for only 16%. Mount St. Joseph, not much better, 4 for 18 for 22.2%. Free throws, Wilmington 4 of 6 for 66.7%. And uh, 20 of 24 for 83 percent percent for Mount St. Joseph. Uh, they scored a lot from that uh, that free throw line, folks. Uh, Wilmington had 10 turnovers. Mount St. Joseph, 17. Uh, the points off the turnovers. Wilmington had 19. Mount St. Joseph, only 9. Rebounds. Mount St. Joseph, 47 rebounds to Wilmington's 38. Uh, total fouls. Wilmington with 26. Mount St. Joseph with 11. Uh, Wilmington had 20 points off their bench. Mount St. Joseph with only 7. And... Uh, that is the ball game uh, for uh, uh, our points total. Russell with 14 for Wilmington. Green with 10. Isles with 9. Chapman with 6. Lewis with 4. Patrick with 2. Heckler, or Hecker with uh, 2. Jones with 1. And uh, for uh, Mount St. Joseph, uh, they had uh, Jordan Henry with their leading score with 14 points, Edwards with 13, Finley with 13, Getz with 9, Cropper with 3, Manor with 2, Herzl with 2, Murdoch with 2. So your final score, Wilmington gets beat by 10 points tonight for our nightcap. Uh, they lost 58 to 48. Our next game will be this Saturday, and the Lady Quakers will be back in action. Uh, we've got four games coming this weekend, two on Saturday and two on Sunday. That is the uh, Hampton Inn Classic. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on our website. We'll have all that information. And a reminder that we've got uh, the Sports Planet on our our, our sister network, TalkTV.us. Uh, Sports Planet will be from Generations Pizza, and we'll be at 7 o'clock. We'll be talking... Uh, NCAA football, particularly the big games that will occur in two weeks. So tune in for that. Well, for Charlie Hargrave, this is Rick Phillips. Uh, we want to thank you for listening. And don't forget, our video from tonight's games will be on our website tomorrow evening. Everybody, good night, and go Quakers.